Hello everyone and welcome back to Looking Forward, my exploration of futuristic designs in Kerbal Space Program using the most advanced technologies available and this time I have adapted the saber that uh, I showed off in the first episode into an X-Wing. Now there are problems with the X-Wing. Now of course I've, I've based it off of the saber so we've still got the antimatter reactors but now we have four of them and this is a lot heavier for obvious reasons. Uh, it's still water burning uh, for the antimatter reactors, and it's got plenty of delta V. But the obvious reason is that Fermi Space Research does not like you to have two wings like this. Now, the aerodynamic problems are not because I had to put huge radiators on the top. That's, of course, because we need to dispel the heat of the reactors, but they're more for emergency usage. We don't have to deploy them. They don't look particularly good deployed either. But just for safety's sake, it's best to have them. Uh, we do have a smaller warp drive at the back, unfortunately. Uh, that was by necessity because this thing really... Well, I guess we could put a big one, but it really risks scraping its tail because of the placement of everything. We'll see. Uh, maybe I should size that up at some point. But let's not uh, fiddle around with that because we've got bigger issues. We've got bigger issues because of the aerodynamics. Far, far likes the aerodynamics of this on the whole. Not if it's going too slowly at uh, 0.35, but if we boost that up to point four we see everything green and that is because I was forced to place canards without the canards everything is not green there uh, so we have canards on the x-wing which is a bad thing I didn't want to do that originally I did not have that but it wouldn't fly otherwise it wouldn't get off the ground normally and I went into desperation mode putting um, SRBs down to lift the nose and such like that so let's not go there let's just put the canards and so I have canards. Um, I had uh, one more set of radiators here, but turns out if you try to attach them to the procedural fuel tanks, uh, they don't uh, stay uh, offset properly, so I had to remove that temporarily. Um, it's X-Wing C for canard, That's a, so there's the canard variant. Uh, I've had to put uh, additional rudders to because the X-Wing itself doesn't have much yaw control, uh, interestingly enough, and so I've had to and somewhere I could but even with all this it cannot work okay and that is because from space does not like the double wings and again I've taken the radiators off it's not because of the radiators and I'll show you what happens let's let's go out and see what happens let's pick crew I've already got uh, uh, Jeb up I wonder oh uh, Bob is actually in the station right we have a station so I've, I'll, I'll put Bob fraud in this and uh, let me show you what happens and we'll revert because I know what happens but we'll be reverting this one so Bob Frog won't die but uh, I want to show you what happens when we try to take off with this okay let me emphasize that I tried everything with this I tried anti-grav units from Kerbal Foundries I tried uh, different shaped canards I tried moving the center of mass and center of lift with respect to each other so uh, nothing changes what's going to, I mean, uh, everything else is worse than what's going to happen here. Uh, this is the best configuration, and so here we go. Our antimatter unit's burning. This thing has plenty of delta V, plenty of acceleration. We're keeping the acceleration low because we don't want to hurt the, the wheels. We have to get to about 150 before rotating. So it needs a lot of run, and that's actually why I preferred using the anti-grav units, but there's no point doing that if we can't really get any lift. And I have to watch myself because I don't need to scrape anything off here. Okay, we can rotate. Up we go. Okay, gear up, and I'm going to have pitch. I'm going to maintain pitch as high as I can, and you can see I'm losing lift, losing lift, losing lift, losing lift. No! Well, at least the generator shut down. But so you see, I could get off the runway and I get enough lift for that. But even with pitch maxed out, it it didn't have enough lift. It couldn't lift itself up. So uh, I think this is because of the weird dynamics of having two wings with far like that. Um, but I, I made the X-Wing and I want to get it into orbit. So there is a solution for this. Uh, we can launch it vertically. 
Okay, so here we have the vertical launch version of the X-Wing. And we still retain the landing gear, though it's tucked in now. And we've dumped the canards, because obviously if we're just going to launch vertically, there's no point. Uh, I've time warped so that we can rendezvous with the station easier. And uh, so we're just waiting. You notice there is a tilt to the wings, and that's for aerodynamic purposes. So completely unnecessary in this configuration, but uh, uh, we'll retain that for now. Anyway, uh, Bob Fraud is back for us, and we won't give him full throttle because that would uh, well, that would be too much. We've got antimatter full. Actually, because I time warped on the pad, we actually have exotic matter full as well, so that's good. And waste heat is not accumulating at this point. Though once we light the antimatter reactors, I assume it will be. Let's find out. Sorry it's in the dark, but again, we're trying to rendezvous with the station. I'll get good shots of the X-Wing in orbit, but I want to cover our ascent. I didn't put any lights on. Maybe we should do that for the X-Wing Mark II or something. I'll try and lighten this section of the video up. Uh, actually, let's not go upside down. Let's go right side up. Now, on vertical ascent, the X-Wing's airfoils will tend to make it uh, go with the gravity turn. In other words, it'll start pitching down automatically, so I'll actually have to coax it back up uh, if it gets to too low a pitch. But so far, so good. Accelerating quite nicely. Once we pass max Q will accelerate a lot faster. Still gotta maintain attitude above 45 degrees until we pass through the region of maximum heating, so I should pitch up a little bit more right now. Unfortunately I don't have city lights on here. It was impossible to put uh, interstellar, near future, together with uh, any sort of additional effects like uh, RSS visual enhancements. Oh, uh, pretty soon the Mac effects will probably give a pretty good outline of... Uh, uh, keep that pitch up, keep that pitch up. Oh, oh, deviating. Remember, this does not have yaw control. It's right now... I, I took off the rudders the vertical stabilizers and the rudders because uh, well we're on vertical launch configuration so I am only using engine gimbling and the the the, which, uh, the thermal nozzles don't have too much gimbling on them I don't think you can see it glowing red here we gotta keep this safe we're not gonna be safe until about 45 kilometers even if it uh, doesn't seem to be glowing red hot. You don't never know which part might be might be in danger of overheating. Oh, now we've got a good uh, Milky Way there. Oh, look at that. That is a nice sight to see in Kerbal Space Program, let's face it. Don't worry, heating here is nominal as long as we don't get the sound effect. Gotta try and keep the pitch up to make sure we don't get the sound effect. I wonder if it'll tell us how much ISP we're getting out of these. Uh, okay, so we've got uh, 3,000 ISP here, thereabouts. You can see the thrust here. Uh, that's due to our setting, though. We could probably get... Uh, 500 out of each of the engines. Okay, we can flatten out now. So 3000 is great, but I mean, when you think about really advanced technology like antimatter, you normally don't think you'll get 3000 out of it. Uh, you, you'll think you get some crazy number, right? 
And so I think this will, well, of course, I think it is possible to get better than that out of antimatter reactors and uh, through some configurations w instead of using a thermal nozzle like this. There are probably some other configurations that could get better results with antimatter reactors. But, um, yep, this is interesting from a uh, sci fi rare standpoint because I can now create real sci fi vessels. Well, real, quote unquote, right? Uh, but uh, something a little bit more realistic. Make sure that I'm being consistent about the capabilities of my spacecraft. And not making wild claims. So, for instance, the warp engine here is set to 0.1c. Well, then I can make sure that things happen uh, with proper timing based on that, right? If I'm doing stuff, uh, if my stories are set in Soul System, this is great because now I've got Soul System in the Kerbal Space Program. I can just simulate anything I want. Of course, I'm not gonna use the X-wing in my stories. I mean, I'm not, uh, I'm not rewriting Star Wars, uh, though plenty of people have done that before. And actually, the actual X-wing doesn't use antimatter engines, I don't believe. So I haven't forgotten about Jeb in orbit in the Sabre. Uh, we will figure something out for him. But he's got plenty of food, water, and oxygen. He had four, 84 days. This, this, uh, not 84 days, 234 days. So, uh, yeah, Jeb should have that too, right? Yeah, both craft have the same uh, life, life support. So they are meant for long space journeys just in case. You never know when you're going to be caught on one of those. Well, silhouette-wise, I think it looks great. There are some discrepancies on the details, of course, but that that is a thing. Let's try and match inclinations with the station a little bit better than what we're doing right now. Okay, I think that's enough for our apoapsis. We are trying to rendezvous, after all. This is definitely a performance craft, by the way. I mean, capable of 6 Gs of acceleration. Certainly would be interesting in a fight. Okay, uh, I don't want to circularize right now. We're, we need to be in a phasing orbit to catch up to the station or let the... Uh, yeah, catch up to the station. So, how are we doing on that? So we've got Jeb also in orbit here, unfortunately in a totally incorrect orbit. And the station is on the opposite side of the planet. Alright, well that'll give us some a good chance on the daylight side to get a good look at this X-Wing over the Earth. Alright, so let's time warp to that. Minor accumulation of waste heat, not a problem. We can turn our antimatter reactors off. And that's probably helpful if you want to not have it consume antimatter while loitering. But I'd rather not turn them on and off too frequently. So we'll keep them on as long as we're on approach to the station. We have to make orbital maneuvers. Once we're just on the MMH and N204, then I'll turn them off. I have to say, the X-Wing looks a lot darker up here than I thought it would. Made it gray. Well, no, it's, it's getting into better light now. Still looks quite menacing with all the red, with the radiators all glowing and everything. Alright, well, there you have it. We are over the east coast of Africa and approaching Madagascar here. And there is an X-Wing in Curl Space Program with antimatter reactors, a warp drive that I'm not sure actually works, but has plenty of exotic matter to work with. We're full up on exotic matter there. But uh, trying out the warp drive is something I'm going to have to fill around with in uh, future exploits, because I have never tried that before, actually. And as I understand it, it's not... It's something you have to get used to, and that is gonna be a trick. Bob Fraud will be be my victim for those experiments I'm sure. Alright so yes X-Wing above the Earth and we will 
uh, rendezvous with the station, the antimatter production station, in the next episode. So look forward to that. We will have a good look at the station, and that that's an interesting design. Even though I didn't, uh, even though it's hyper edited up, it's a nice sight, and even more so because I think we'll get okay frame rates around it, even though it's a huge thing. So we'll take a look at it. It's not that many parts, even though it's physically very large. Uh, so we'll see if we can get decent frame rates around it. And yep, so Bob Fraud will be headed over there in the next episode. So with that, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this episode, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.